Tom Swift and his electric runabout by Victor Appleton. Chapter Thirteen, Towed by a Mule. Bless my gizzard! Is it anything serious? Asked Mister Damon. Will it blow up or anything like that? No, replied the lad as he leaped out of the car and began to make an examination. Mister Sharp assisted him. The motor seems to be all right, remarked the balloonist as he inspected it. Yes, agreed our hero, and the batteries have plenty of power left in them yet. The gauge shows that. I can't understand what the trouble can be unless... He paused in his remark. He paused in his remark and uttered an exclamation. I've found it, he cried. What? demanded the aeronaut. Some of these fuses blew out. I turned on too much current, and the fuses wouldn't carry it. I put them in to save the motor from being burned out. But I don't use heavy enough ones. I see where my mistake was. But what does it mean? inquired Mr. Damon. It means that we've got to walk back home, was Tom's sorrowful answer. The car is stalled, for I haven't any extra fuses with me. Can't you connect up the battery by using some extra wire? asked Mr. Sharp. I have some, I have some, and he drew a coil of it from his pocket. I wouldn't dare to. It might be so heavy that it would carry more current than the motor can stand. I don't want to burn that out. No, I guess we'll have to walk home, or rather I will. You two can stay here until I come back with heavier fuses. I'm sorry. Tom had, ar Tom had hardly ceased speaking, when from around the turn in the road proceeded a voice, and at the sound of it all three started, for the voice was saying, Now it ain't no use for you to act that away, boomerang. You all ain't got no call to get contrary now just when I want to get home to my dinner. I shouldn't think you'd want to get a disable. I should think you'd want to get to the stable too. But if you all ain't mighty careful, I'll cut down your rations. That's what I's a going to do. Get along now. That's a good fellow. Ho, ho. I know that'd fetch you all. When you all waggle your ears that away, that's a sure sign you all going to move. Then followed the sound of a rattletrap wagon approaching. Eradicate! It's eradicate! exclaimed Tom. And his mule boomerang, added Mr. Sharp. He's just in time, commented Mr. Damon, with a sigh of relief as the ancient outfit in charge of the aged colored man came along. Eradicate had been sent to Shopton to get a load of wood for Mr. Swift, and was now returning. At the sight of the stalled auto, the mule picked up his ears and threw them forward. Whoa, da, now, Boomerang, cried Eradicate. Don't you all commence to get skittish. That machine ain't going to hurt you. Why, good land of messy, if it ain't Mr. Swift, cried the colored man as he caught sight of Tom. What's the trouble? he asked broken down answered the young inventor briefly you always seem to come along when i'm in trouble rad that's right assented eradicate with a grin me in trouble am old acquaintances sometimes she hits me a clip on de head then again boomerang my mule gets it he just had his trouble got a stone under his shoe and don't want to move then when i did get him started he balked on me but it's all right now but I sure am sorry for you. Can't I help you all, Mr. Swift? Yes, you can, Rad, answered Tom. Drive home as fast as you can and ask Dad to send back with you some of those fuses he'll find on my workbench. He knows what I want. Hurry there and hurry back. Eradicate shook his head doubtfully. What's the matter? Don't you want to go? asked Mr. Sharp, a trifle nettled. We can't get the car started until we have some new fuses. Oh, I wants to go all right enough, Mr. Sharp, was Eradicate's prompt answer. You all knows I'd do anything to oblige you, old Mr. Smith. But it's this here mule, Boomerang. I just done promised him that we was going home to dinner and he specs a manger full of boats. If I got to Mr. Swift's house with him, I couldn't no more get him to come back without his dinner. Then you can get that there car to move without them fusing things you all talked about. Bless my necktie, exclaimed Mr. Damon. That's all nonsense. You don't suppose that mule understands what you say to him, do you? How does he know you promised him his dinner? I don't know how he know, Mr. Damon, replied Eradicate, but he do know just the same. I know it would be like pulling teeth. 
and wuss to get boomerang to start back with them foozed things until after he's had his dinner wouldn't it boomerang the mule waved his long ears as if in answer bless my soul i believe he does understand cried mr damon of course he do put in the colored man i was awfully sorry now if it were afternoon i could bring back them what do you call em's in a jiffy cause boomerang always feels good after he has his dinner but before that and eradicate shook his head as if there was no more to be said on the subject well remarked tom sadly i guess there's no help for it we'll have to walk home unless you two want to wait until i can get back with eradicate and come back on my motorcycle then i'll have to leave the cycle here for i can't get it in the car bless my collar button cried mr damon it's like a puzzle of the fox the goose and the bag of corn on the banks of a stream i guess we'd better all walk hold on exclaimed mr sharp is your mule good and strong eradicate strong why this your mule could pull a horse over dat is when he's got a mind to and he'd do most anything you know cause he's anxious to get home into his dinner ain't you all boomerang once more the mule waved his ears like signal flags then i have a proposition to make went on the mulinist unhitch the mule from the load of wood and hitch him to the auto we've got some rope along i noticed then the mule can pull us and the runabout home good idea cried mr damon dash de ragged ejaculated eradicate i'll just sequesterate this here load of wood side of the road and hit boomerang to the auto tom said nothing for a few seconds he gazed sadly at his auto which he hoped would win the touring club's prize it was a bitter pill for him to swallow towed by a mule he exclaimed shaking his head and smiling ruefully the fastest car in this country towed by a mule it's tough luck tain't half so bad as going without your dinner mr swift remarked eradicate as he began to harness the mule to the electric runabout boomerang made no objection to the transfer he looked around once or twice as he was being made fast to the auto and when the word was given he stepped out as if pulling home stalled cars was his regular business tom sat beside eradicate on the front seat and steered while the colored man drove the mule and mr sharp and mr damon were in the tonneau seats as tom called them i hope no one sees us thought tom but he was doomed to disappointment when nearly home he heard an auto approaching and in it were andy foger sam snedeker and pete bailey the three cronies stared at the odd sight of boomerang ambling along with his great ears flapping drawing tom's speedy new car ha <laughs> ha laughed andy so that's the motive power he's going to use look at him fellows i thought his new electric that was going to beat my car and win the prize was to be two hundred horsepower instead it's one mule power that's rich and andy's chums joined in the laugh at poor tom the young inventor said nothing for there was nothing he could say in dignified silence he passed the car containing his enemies they meanwhile jeering at him that's all right spoke eradicate sympathizing with his young employer maybe they'll want a tow themselves some day and when they does i'll make boomerang pull em in a ditch but this was small comfort to tom he made up his mind though that he would demonstrate that his car would do all that he had claimed for it and that very soon